The Green New Deal GND, is a proposed economic stimulus package that aims to address climate change and economic inequality. The name refers to the New Deal, a set of social and economic reforms and public works projects undertaken by President Franklin D. Roosevelt in response to the Great Depression. The Green New Deal combines Roosevelt's economic approach with modern ideas such as renewable energy and resource efficiency. In the 116th United States Congress, it is a pair of resolutions, House Resolution 109 and S. Res. 59, sponsored by Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Senator Ed Markey DMA. On March 25, 2019, Markey's resolution failed to advance in the U.S. Senate in a margin of 0 to 57, with most Senate Democrats voting present in protest to the vote. Topic: History. Throughout the 1970s and 1990s an economic policy to move the United States economy away from non-renewable energy was developed by multiple activists. An early use of the phrase, Green New Deal, was by journalist Thomas Friedman. He argued in favor of the idea in the New York Times and the New York Times Magazine. In January 2007, Friedman wrote, If you have put a windmill in your yard or some solar panels on your roof, bless your heart. But we will only green the world when we change the very nature of the electricity grid, moving it away from dirty coal or oil to clean coal and renewables. And that is a huge industrial project, much bigger than anyone has told you. Finally, like the New Deal, if we undertake the green version, it has the potential to create a whole new clean power industry to spur our economy into the 21st century. This approach was subsequently taken up in Britain by the Green New Deal Group, which published its eponymous report on July 21, 2008. The concept was further popularized and put on a wider footing when the United Nations Environment Programme UNEP, began to promote it. In the spring of 2008, author Jeff Biggers launched a series of challenges for a Green New Deal from the perspective of his writings from coal country in Appalachia. Biggers wrote. Obama should shatter these artificial racial boundaries by proposing a new green deal to revamp the region and bridge a growing chasm between bitterly divided Democrats, and call for an end to mountaintop removal policies that have led to impoverishment and ruin in the coal fields. Biggers followed up with other Green New Deal proposals over the next four years. On October 22, 2008, UNEP's executive director Akim Steiner unveiled a global Green New Deal initiative that aims to create jobs in green industries, thus boosting the world economy and curbing climate change at the same time. The Green Party of the United States and Green Party presidential candidate Jill Stein proposed a Green New Deal beginning in 2012. The Green New Deal remains officially part of the platform of the Green Party of the United States. Topic. In the United States Topic. Early efforts In 2006, a Green New Deal was created by the Green New Deal Task Force as a plan for 100% clean, renewable energy by 2030 utilizing a carbon tax, a jobs guarantee, free college, single-payer health care, and a focus on using public programs. Since 2006 the Green New Deal has been included in the platforms of multiple Green Party candidates, such as Howie Hawkins' gubernatorial campaigns in 2010, 2014, and 2018, and Jill Stein's 2012 and 2016 presidential campaigns. Topic. Later adoption A. 
Green New Deal wing began to emerge in the Democratic Party after the November 2018 elections, a possible program in 2018 for a Green New Deal. Assembled by the think tank Data for Progress was described as pairing labor programs with measures to combat the climate crisis. A November 2018 article in Vogue stated, There isn't just one Green New Deal yet. For now, it's a platform position that some candidates are taking to indicate that they want the American government to devote the country to preparing for climate change as fully as Franklin Delano Roosevelt once did to reinvigorating the economy after the Great Depression. A week after the 2018 midterm elections, climate justice group Sunrise Movement organized a protest in Nancy Pelosi's office calling on Pelosi to support a Green New Deal. On the same day, freshman Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez launched a resolution to create a committee on the Green New Deal. Following this, several candidates came out supporting a Green New Deal including Deb Holland, Rashida Tlaib, Ilhan Omar, and Antonio Delgado. They were joined in the following weeks by reps. John Lewis, Earl Blumenauer, Carolyn Maloney, and Jose Serrano. By the end of November, 18 Democratic members of Congress were co sponsoring a proposed House Select Committee on a Green New Deal, and incoming representatives Ayanna Presley and Joe Neguse had announced their support. Draft text would task this committee with a detailed national, industrial, economic mobilization plan capable of making the U.S. economy carbon neutral while promoting economic and environmental justice and equality to be released in early 2020, with draft legislation for implementation within 90 days. Organizations supporting a Green New Deal initiative included 350.org, Greenpeace, Sierra Club, Extinction Rebellion and Friends of the Earth, a Sunrise Movement protest on behalf of a Green New Deal at the Capitol Hill offices of Nancy Pelosi and Steny Hoyer on December 10, 2018 featured Lennox Yearwood and speakers as young as age 7, resulting in 143 arrests. Euronews, the pan-European news organization, displayed video of youth with signs saying Green New Deal, quote quote, no excuses, and do your job, in its no comment. Section. On December 14, 2018, a group of over 300 local elected officials from 40 states issued a letter endorsing a Green New Deal approach. That same day, a poll released by Yale Program on Climate Change Communication indicated that although 82% of registered voters had not heard of the Green New Deal, it had strong bipartisan support among voters. A nonpartisan description of the general concepts behind a Green New Deal resulted in 40% of respondents saying they strongly support, and 41% saying they somewhat support the idea. On January 10, 2019, over 600 organizations submitted a letter to Congress declaring support for policies to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. This includes ending fossil fuel extraction and subsidies, transitioning to 100% clean renewable energy by 2035, expanding public transportation, and strict emission reductions rather than reliance on carbon emission trading. Topic. Green New Deal Resolution Senator Edward Markey and Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez released a 14-page resolution for their Green New Deal on February 7, 2019. According to the Washington Post, February 11, 2019, the resolution calls for a 10-year national mobilization whose primary goals would be Guaranteeing a job with a family sustaining wage, adequate family and medical leave, paid vacations, and retirement security to all people of the United States.
providing all people of the United States with I high quality health care, e affordable, safe, and adequate housing, e economic security, and IV access to clean water, clean air, healthy and affordable food, and nature. Providing resources, training, and high-quality education, including higher education, to all people of the United States. Meeting 100% of the power demand in the United States through clean, renewable, and zero-emission energy sources. Repairing and upgrading the infrastructure in the United States, including, by eliminating pollution and greenhouse gas emissions as much as technologically feasible. Building or upgrading to energy efficient, distributed, and smart power grids, and working to ensure affordable access to electricity. Upgrading all existing buildings in the United States and building new buildings to achieve maximal energy efficiency, water efficiency, safety, affordability, comfort, and durability, including through electrification. Overhauling transportation systems in the United States to eliminate pollution and greenhouse gas emissions from the transportation sector as much as is technologically feasible, including through investment in I zero emission vehicle infrastructure and manufacturing, e clean, affordable, and accessible public transportation, and e high speed rail. Spurring massive growth in clean manufacturing in the United States and removing pollution and greenhouse gas emissions from manufacturing and industry as much as is technologically feasible. Working collaboratively with farmers and ranchers in the United States to eliminate pollution and greenhouse gas emissions from the agricultural sector as much as is technologically feasible. The approach pushes for transitioning the United States to use 100% renewable, zero-emission energy sources, including investment into electric cars and high-speed rail systems, and implementing the social cost of carbon that has been part of Obama administration's plans for addressing climate change within 10 years. Besides increasing state-sponsored jobs, this Green New Deal is also aimed to address poverty by aiming much of the improvements in the frontline and vulnerable communities, which include the poor and disadvantaged people. To gain additional support, the resolution includes calls for universal health care, increased minimum wages, and preventing monopolies. On March 26, in what Democrats called a stunt. Republicans called for an early vote on the resolution without allowing discussion or expert testimony. In protest, 42 Democrats and one independent who caucuses with Democrats voted present, resulting in a 57-0 defeat on the Senate floor. Three Democrats and one independent who caucuses with Democrats voted against the bill, while the other votes were along party lines. As of April 2019, while Democratic members continue to push for the Green New Deal in hopes of converting the country to renewable energy, providing health care for all, and creating surplus jobs, Republican lawmakers have continuously rejected the resolution. President Donald Trump has spoken out against the Green New Deal and has referred to climate change as a hoax. Topic. House Select Committee on the Climate Crisis Various perspectives emerged in late 2018 as to whether to form a committee dedicated to climate, what powers such a committee might be granted, and whether the committee would be specifically tasked with developing a Green New Deal. Incoming House Committee Chairs Frank Polony and Peter DeFazio indicated a preference for handling these matters in the House Energy and Commerce Committee and the House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee. 
Writing in Gentleman's Quarterly, J. Willis responded that despite the best efforts of Polony and DeFazio over many years, the planet's prognosis has failed to improve, providing pretty compelling evidence that it is time for legislators to consider taking a different approach. In contrast, Rep. R. O'Connor thought that creating a select committee specifically dedicated to a Green New Deal would be a very common sense idea. Based on the recent example of the Select Committee on Energy Independence and Global Warming 2007 to 2011, which had proven effective in developing a 2009 bill for cap and trade legislation, proposals for the House Select Committee on the Climate Crisis did not contain Green New Deal language and lacked the powers desired by Green New Deal proponents, such as the ability to subpoena documents or depose witnesses. Representative Kathy Castor of Florida was appointed to chair the committee. Topic: January 2019 letter to Congress from environmental groups. On January 10, 2019, a letter signed by 626 organizations in support of a Green New Deal was sent to all members of Congress. It called for measures such as an expansion of the Clean Air Act, a ban on crude oil exports, an end to fossil fuel subsidies and fossil fuel leasing, and a phase out of all gasoline-powered vehicles by 2040. The letter also indicated that signatories would vigorously oppose Market-based mechanisms and technology options such as carbon and emissions trading and offsets, carbon capture and storage, nuclear power, waste to energy and biomass energy. Six major environmental groups did not sign on to the letter, the Sierra Club, the Natural Resources Defense Council, the Environmental Defense Fund, Moms Clean Air Force, Environment America, and the Audubon Society. An article in The Atlantic quoted Greg Carr Lock, who prepared a different Green New Deal plan for the left-wing think tank data for progress. As responding, there is no scenario produced by the IPCC or the UN where we hit mid-century decarbonization without some kind of carbon capture. The MIT Technology Review responded to the letter with an article titled, Let's Keep the Green New Deal Grounded in Science. The MIT article states that, although the letter refers to the rapid and aggressive action needed to prevent the 1.5 C of warming specified in the UN Climate Panel's latest report, simply acknowledging the report's recommendation is not sufficient. If the letter's signatories start from a position where the options of carbon pricing, carbon capture for fossil plants, hydropower, and nuclear power, are not even on the table for consideration, there may be no feasible technical means to reach the necessary 1.5 C climate goal. A report in Axios suggested that the letter's omission of a carbon tax, which has been supported by moderate Republicans, did not mean that signatories would oppose carbon pricing. The director of the Center for Science, Technology, and Innovation Policy at George Mason University was quoted as saying, as long as organizations hold on to a rigid set of ideas about what the solution is, it's going to be hard to make progress. And that's what worries me. Topic. Models for implementation As of January 2019, models for structuring a Green New Deal remain in the initial stages of discussion. Although Chuck Schumer has indicated that measures to address climate change and renewable energy must be included in a 2019 infrastructure package, as of December 2018, articles describing his position referred to it as green infrastructure. Rather than as a Green New Deal, on January 17, 2019, prospective presidential candidate Jay Inslee called for Green New Deal goals of net zero carbon pollution by mid-century and creating good-paying jobs building a future run on clean energy. 
in a Washington Post op-ed. However, he framed these efforts in terms of national mobilization, saying, confronting climate change will require a full-scale mobilization, a national mission that must be led from the White House. Topic. Economic policy and planning for environment and climate An article in The Intercept characterizes a Green New Deal more broadly, as economic planning and industrial policy measures which would enable mobilization for the environment, similar to the economic mobilization for World War II, and similar to the internal planning of large corporations. Economist Stephanie Kelton, a proponent of modern monetary policy, and others argue that natural resources, including a stable, livable climate, are limited resources whereas money, following the abandonment of the gold standard, is really just a legal and social tool that should be marshaled to provide for sustainable public policies. To this end, a mix of policies and programs could be adopted, including tax incentives and targeted taxes, reformed construction and zoning standards, transportation fleet electrification, coastal shoreline hardening, farm bill subsidies linked to carbon capture and renewables generation, and much more. Practically, Kelton argues that the key to implementation is garnering enough political support, rather than becoming fixated on specific pay furs. Many proposed Green New Deal programs would generate significant numbers of new jobs. One proposed model for funding says that funding would come primarily from certain public agencies, including the U.S. Federal Reserve and a new public bank or system of regional and specialized public banks. This model, which has been endorsed by over 40 House members, has been compared to the work of the Creditanstalt fur Wiederaufbau KFW, or Reconstruction Credit Institute, a large German public sector development bank, the China Development Bank, and the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. Topic. Employment programs coupled with business investment for environment and climate Topic. New Deal improvisation as a model Although the non-specific nature of current GND proposals has become a concern for some Greens, one writer from the Columbia University Earth Institute views the lack of specificity as a strength, noting that, FDR's New Deal was a series of improvisations in response to specific problems that were stalling economic development. There was no master plan, many ideas failed, and some were ended after a period of experimentation. But some, like Social Security and the Security and Exchange Commission's regulation of the stock market, became permanent American institutions. Topic. Green skills worker training programs Existing programs training workers in green skills include a program called Roots of Success, founded in 2008 to bring low-income people into living wage professions. Funding for Roots of Success came from the $90 billion in green initiatives incorporated in the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009. Topic. Green Stimulus under the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009 About 12% of ARA funding went to green investment, and some of these initiatives were successful. A January 2019 article in Politico stated that U.S. wind capacity has more than tripled since 2008, while solar capacity is up more than sixfold. LEDs were 1% of the lighting market in 2008, now they're more than half the market. There were almost no plug-in electric vehicles in 2008, now there are more than 1 million on U.S. roads. 
Although ARRA's green stimulus projects are of interest for developing proposals for a Green New Deal, its mixed results included both boosting innovative firms, such as Tesla, and the $535 million failure of the Solyndra Solar Company. These initial efforts at green stimulus are described as a cautionary tale. It remains necessary to develop mechanisms for promoting large-scale green business development, as it is unclear whether focusing on job creation programs alone will result in optimizing the climate impact of new jobs. Topic. Criticism Many who support some goals of the Green New Deal express doubt about feasibility of one or more parts of it. John P. Holderin, former science advisor to Obama, thinks the 2030 goal is too optimistic, saying that 2045 or 2050 would be more realistic. Many members of the Green Party have also attacked the plan due to its cutting of multiple parts of their plan, such as the elimination of nuclear power and jobs guarantee, and the changing of the goal from an 100% clean, renewable energy economy by 2030 to the elimination of the U.S. carbon footprint by 2030, Paul Bledsoe of the Progressive Policy Institute, the think tank affiliated with the Conservative Democratic Leadership Council, expressed concern that setting unrealistic, aspirational, goals of 100% renewable energy could undermine the credibility of the effort. Against climate change, economist Edward Barbier, who developed the Global Green New Deal, Proposal for the United Nations Environment Program in 2009, opposes a massive federal jobs program, saying, the government would end up doing more and more of what the private sector and industry should be doing. Barbier prefers carbon pricing, such as a carbon tax or cap and trade system, in order to address distortions in the economy that are holding back private sector innovation and investments in clean energy. When Senator Dianne Feinstein DCA was confronted by youth associated with the Sunrise Movement on why she doesn't support the Green New Deal, she told them, there's no way to pay for it, and that it could not pass a Republican-controlled Senate. In a tweet following the confrontation, Feinstein said that she remains committed to enact real, meaningful climate change legislation. In February 2019, the center-right American Action Forum estimated that the plan could cost between $51 to $93 trillion over the next decade. They estimate its potential cost at $600,000 per household. The organization estimated the cost for eliminating carbon emissions from the transportation system at $1.30 minus $2.7 trillion, guaranteeing a job to every American $6.80 minus $44.6 trillion. Universal Health Care estimated close to $36 trillion. According to Bloomberg Businessweek, Wall Street is willing to invest significant resources toward GND programs, but not unless Congress commits to moving it forward. The AFL CIO, in a letter to Ocasio Cortez, expressed strong reservations about the GND, saying, We welcome the call for labor rights and dialogue with labor, but the Green New Deal resolution is far too short on specific solutions that speak to the jobs of our members and the critical sections of our economy. In an op-ed for Slate, Alex Baca criticizes the Green New Deal for failing to address the environmental, economic, and social consequences of urban sprawl. Adam Millsap criticizes the GND's over-reliance on public transit to make cities more environmentally friendly, since public transit integrates better in monocentric cities than in polycentric ones. He suggests land use reforms to increase density, congestion pricing, and eliminating parking requirements as measures that can be applied more flexibly to cities with monocentric and polycentric layouts. Topic. 
Left-wing criticism of the Green New Deal Although the Green New Deal is often presented as a left-wing proposal, criticism of it has come from left-wing commentators who have argued that the Green New Deal fails to tackle the real cause of the climate emergency, namely the concept of unending growth and consumption inherent in capitalism, and is instead an attempt to greenwash capitalism. Left-wing critics of the Green New Deal argue that it is not the monetization of green policies and practices within capitalism that are necessary, but an anti-capitalist adoption policies for degrowth. Writing in the socialist journal Counterpunch in 2019, Seamus Cook stated, A Green New Deal is a fine demand, but ultimately the project is hopeless if it's executed under a capitalist umbrella. Only a socialist Green New Deal can deliver a thorough transformation of society demanded by the situation, coordinating the vast wealth and technology of the country while inviting more nations into the project, since climate change is as global as capitalism. Topic. Criticism of a draft document Both Republican politicians and those generally critical of progressivism in the United States have criticized a frequently asked questions document once posted to Representative Ocasio-Cortez's website later removed but still viewable on the Wayback Machine, many criticisms centered on a line promising economic security to those unwilling to work. Green New Deal advisor Robert C. Hockett stated that this line was present only in doctored versions of the FAQ, but later said he had been mistaken. According to Ocasio Cortez, the document was a draft and a staffer that had a really bad day at work published it. <laughs> Topic. Supporters Topic. Individuals Jill Stein, former Green Party presidential candidate in 2012 and 2016 Howie Hawkins, Green Party co-founder and first American political candidate to run on the promise of a Green New Deal Jagmeet Singh, leader of the New Democratic Party of Canada endorsed a Canadian Green New Deal Ban Ki-moon, former UN Secretary General Pete Buttigieg, Mayor of South Bend seeking the nomination in the 2020 Democratic Party presidential primaries Al Gore, environmentalist, filmmaker and former Vice President Mike Gravel, former U.S. Senator from Alaska and candidate in the 2020 Democratic Party presidential primaries Naomi Klein Paul Krugman Bill Maher Bria Vanate recorded a Green New Deal video for Vogue magazine in 2018 Marianne Williamson, candidate in the 2020 Democratic Party presidential primaries Andrew Young, candidate in the 2020 Democratic Party presidential primaries Topic. Senators Ed Markey, U.S. Senator from Massachusetts Jeff Merkley, U.S. Senator from Oregon Bernie Sanders, U.S. Senator from Vermont seeking the nomination in the 2020 Democratic Party presidential primaries, ranking member of the Senate Budget Committee Kirsten Gillibrand, U.S. Senator from New York seeking the nomination in the 2020 Democratic Party presidential primaries Kamala Harris, U.S. Senator from California seeking the nomination in the 2020 Democratic Party presidential primaries Elizabeth Warren, U.S. Senator from Massachusetts seeking the nomination in the 2020 Democratic Party presidential primaries Maisie Hirono, U.S. Senator from Hawaii Ron Wyden, U.S. Senator from Oregon 
Richard Blumenthal U.S. Senator from Connecticut Cory Booker, U.S. Senator from New Jersey seeking nomination in the 2020 Democratic Party presidential primaries Amy Klobuchar, U.S. Senator from Minnesota seeking nomination in the 2020 Democratic Party presidential primaries Chris Murphy, U.S. Senator from Connecticut Chris Van Hollen, U.S. Senator from Maryland Topic. Members of Congress Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, U.S. Representative from New York's 14th Congressional District Rashida Tlaib, U.S. Representative from Michigan's 13th Congressional District Joe Kennedy III, U.S. Representative from Massachusetts's 4th Congressional District Ayanna Presley, U.S. Representative from Massachusetts's 7th Congressional District. Topic. Organizations The Climate Mobilization, which advocates a World War II scale economic mobilization to restore a safe climate. The Democracy in Europe Movement 2025 a pan-European political activist group of over 100.000 members for progressive EU and global economics policy, founded by Yanis Varoufakis. The European Green Party and the Greens European Free Alliance campaigned on the Green New Deal in the European Parliament election, 2009 and maintain an ongoing European. Green New Deal campaign. The Global Greens support a Global Green New Deal. Green Party of the United States has endorsed the Green New Deal in its party platform. The Heinrich Boll Foundation published proposals for a Green New Deal in Germany, the European Union, as well as North America, Israel, and Ukraine. The League of Conservation Voters is an American advocacy group for environmental issues. The New Economics Foundation and the Green New Deal Group United Kingdom. Open Democracy. Sierra Club Living Economy Program. The United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific, who developed the low-carbon green growth roadmap for Asia and the Pacific. The United Nations Environment Programme launched a green economy initiative known as the Global Green New Deal. The Global Marshall Plan Initiative advocates for a sustainable global economy. Topic. Detractors Topic individuals On February 9, 2019, United States President Donald Trump voiced his opposition using sarcasm via Twitter as follows, I think it is very important for the Democrats to press forward with their Green New Deal. It would be great for the so-called carbon footprint to permanently eliminate all planes, cars, cows, oil, gas and the military, even if no other country would do the same. Brilliant, Democratic Senator Dianne Feinstein objected to the plan saying there's no way to pay for it and is drafting her own narrowed-down version. Democratic Senator Joe Manchin criticized the plan as a dream adding that it would hurt regions dependent on reliable, affordable energy. Republican White House aide Sebastian Gorka has referred to the deal as what Stalin dreamed about but never achieved and that they proponents of the deal want to take your pickup truck. They want to rebuild your home. They want to take away your hamburgers. The comments about hamburgers are a common criticism of the deal by conservatives, who have gone on to criticize Representative Ocasio-Cortez for allowing her chief of staff to eat a hamburger with her at a Washington restaurant. On February 13, 2019, Representative Mark Walker RNC released a parody video on his verified Twitter account comparing the Green New Deal to the failed fire festival, using the hashtag hashtag GN Disfire. 
On March 14, 2019, Representative Rob Bishop, a Republican representing Utah's 1st Congressional District, said that the legislation was tantamount to genocide, adding shortly afterward that his comment was maybe an overstatement, but not by a lot. Topic in Australia The Australian Greens have advocated for a green plan, similar to the Green New Deal, since 2009. Deputy Leader Christine Milne discussed the idea on the ABC's panel discussion program Q&A on February 19, 2009, and it was the subject of a major national conference of the Australian Greens in 2009. After their 2019 federal election defeat, Australian Labour Party Shadow Environment Minister Tony Burke signalled his support for a suite of regulation and stimulus policies similar to a Green New Deal. Topic. In the UK Green MP for Brighton Pavilion, Caroline Lucas, raised the idea during an economic debate in 2008. In March 2019, an activist group known as Extinction Rebellion called on the Labour Party to commit to taking radical steps to decarbonise the UK economy within a decade. A group spokesperson said they are calling the proposed movement labor for a Green New Deal. Because climate change is fundamentally about class, because it means chaos for the many while the few profit. They are calling for expansion of public ownership and democratic control of industry, a region-specific guarantee of green jobs, and substantial investments in public infrastructure. The group states that they got their inspiration from the Sunrise Movement and the work that Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez has done in the U.S. Group members have met with Zach Exley, co-founder of the progressive group Justice Democrats, to learn from the experiences that he and Ocasio-Cortez have had in working for the Green New Deal campaign in the U.S. On April 30, former Labour Party leader Ed Miliband joined Caroline Lucas and former South Thanet Conservative MP Laura Sandys in calling for a Green New Deal in the U.K. The left-wing campaigning group Momentum also wished to influence the Labour Party's manifesto to include a Green New Deal. Topic. In Canada In early May 2019, with rising concerns about the need for urgent global environmental action to reduce potentially catastrophic effects of climate change, a nonpartisan coalition of nearly 70 groups launched the Pact for a Green New Deal for French-speaking audiences. The campaign is branded as New Deal Vert au Canada, with press conferences in Montreal, Toronto, and Vancouver. The coalition called for fossil fuel emissions reduction in half by 2030. On May 16, 2019 the Green Party released a five-page summary of their plan entitled, Mission, Possible, the Green Climate Action Plan. Topic. See also Adaptation to global warming Climate change mitigation Economics of global warming Green growth Politics of global warming Prosperity without growth Sunrise movement <laughs>